What is up, guys, and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today we have a special guest. He's been on Men's Fitness Magazine. He's an elite trainer who specializes in many areas in the fitness field. He's a huge fitness advocate, leader in the community. He's also the inventor of the Autosphere. Please help me welcome CJ Kogo. What's up, my brother? Ooh, crowd goes wild. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my neighbors, dude. My neighbors are getting in on Woo! SEO. There. Good job, guys. Thanks. <laughs> I, uh, What's happening, man? I did one of those ESPN things where I, where I had everybody log in digitally. So I have this stadium surrounding me with them all LED screens. <laughs> There you go. We have to yeah, do the. I got, nah, 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 nah. I, got, I got crazy support, guys, for this. Oh, one, so. no, thank you for having me. Thanks for the, the great intro. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. We yeah, appreciate brother. it. No, you're busy. Absolutely. Absolutely. My mom would have been proud to hear all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's always a good yeah, thing, you, you know, when you can make the parents proud all day. Yeah. yeah. You, you didn't mention her, but she's still. Proud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mama, Mama, we admire you. <laughs> Mama Kogo. Mama Kogo, we admire you. <laughs> Much love. Oh, you you want to hear an amazing story? Have her on the podcast. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Maybe we got to have you and her. She can just. Man. We she, haven't even started with you, and he's already throwing mom in here. Yeah. Oh right. man, my mom is a is an angel, a gift. Yeah, I'm sure at some point, as we go going through stuff, she'll she'll be on topic just because she's 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 that important. Well, okay. awesome. Definitely want to hear about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, definitely. how you been, man? How, how are things going for you? How's um. How's everything been during these times? Um, yeah. how, how are you doing in your, in your business, man, in life? Yeah, so life uh, today actually um, was my one month of therapy. Completed one, one month of my first uh, therapy session. Um, awesome, man. Congrats. Yeah, thanks, dude. I was on the way to, to get some groceries, and one of my buddies said to me, he's like, you know, have you taken a second to step back and say, wow, all the stuff that's happened in your life since February? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, you know moving from New York, having a baby, COVID, blah, and he just starts naming these things. And I was like, oh man, I didn't even take the time to step back and think about life and how crazy it got so fast. Um, and then fast forward two days later, I was laying in bed with my wife and she pops up this little thing and it says like post, uh, post baby um, depression and there's some like things there. And she's like, well, maybe we should look at this. And I, go, I was like, are you feeling depressed? She's like, no, maybe you should take a look at this and i'm like oh i didn't see that <laughs> yeah. coming yeah. you know and this oh, is somebody me? who like yeah me oh cool that's funny yeah i totally knew you thought it was me that needed it uh, but you know all, all jokes aside you know i'm always somebody who's so positive and looks at the bright side of things and and, and really tries to turn you know negatives into into to good things and you know for the one major time in my life i really had to say look you know it's okay for me to to have somebody an unbiased resource to go to and have these conversations and get deep and like express what i'm going through um and you know i it's not from a place of depression but it's definitely from a place of oh life is crazy right now um yeah. but i am a, a a dad to a two and a half month old baby who changed Congrats my again. life yeah congratulations Thank you man. so much yeah so i would say uh, the moment he was born till now i've almost tripled my income um so i was amazing fire underneath my butt what, yeah, what's his uh, name? Christian. Christian as well. Okay, Christian. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it was a hard decision. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was that so, part of the but, agreement that you would name him Christian if you went to therapy? Yeah. And so, boom, See, I therapy. Knew it. There you yeah. go. There you go. <laughs> it's always a contingency to that. Um, <clears throat> middle name, Jeremy. Uh, we gave him uh, his middle name because my um, wife's parents lost their first boy. And Jeremy was his name. So, Christian Jeremy. That's amazing. Um, that's nice, so you, yeah. can have, you can have CJ if he wants. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's awesome. He's like, yeah. CJ. I'm, like, I'm CJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excuse yeah. me. I, yeah. I want to ask you, you know, because I, I've dealt with, you know, some mental health hiccups in, in my life, you know, struggling as a child and, and, you know, kind of moving into that awkward young adult phase, you know, and I, I still, you know, every or periodically right go and, and see my therapist and, and kind of recap some of the things that are going on and you know I, I want to get your take because you're like us right you're you're a high achiever you're always trying to excel I feel like anyone who finds success in the fitness industry really has this characteristic where it's just go 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 non-stop there's always 
15 other things that you have to check off the list, even though you checked off 50 before, you know, and because of that fact, we fail to look back, you know, behind us and really acknowledge, we've talked about it on the podcast before, you know, how important it really is to take a step back, like you were saying, and really analyze the accomplishments that you've had big and small, right? Because they, they do matter. And for us, it's, it's difficult because it's something that we always push towards our clients, but it's, it's hard to turn that around on ourselves and, and really reflect on those, those positive changes and those positive steps that we've taken in our life. So, you know, other than, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the fact that your, your son came into, came into this world, which is amazing, right? Was, was there anything else that really made you or, or any things that you saw or could feel leading up to it that really made you go when your wife did say, you know, maybe you should check this out. You know, what, what was it that made you come to the realization internally, right? Because a lot of people have told, you know, countless individuals, including myself, like, you know, maybe therapy would be the, the right th- route to go. But until you really internalize that, it's tough to make that, you know, commitment, right? So yep. what other feelings, what other things did you see going on in your life? And, and, you know, how has it really been since, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not going to tell you to dive too in detail if you don't want to, yeah. but how has it been since, like, what, what revelations have you come uh, across since going through that process, beginning that process? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, <clears throat> it's a great question. You know, I think, I'm, I consider myself an open book. So as deep as we want to dive, I'm more than happy to dive. And that's as deep as you want to go. Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I think basically what you said was we have a really hard time looking back and, and appreciating this. So, so what that tells me and what it tells me about myself, because I deal with the same thing is the things that make us great can also be the things that hold us back. Right. And, and, and getting a good grasp on what those are and understanding that it's like this tug Uh, can actually help benefit us us by, you know, acknowledging that. I would say in terms of your direct question, you know, I've, my wife and I are extremely open in how we communicate. I think this is one of our strongest points of our relationship. Very important uh, in a marriage. Absolutely. And so, you know, there's been times where she said things like, you know, I just don't know how you turned out to be such a good guy. And I would be so confused by it because really the only thing I would look back in my life and say, well, what are some of the traumas I've been through? One of those being my parents got a divorce. Um, I would always look at it like, well, they both were still there for me. The relationship was, was still very positive post-divorce. Um, I had two parents who loved me. You know, I looked at it always from that perspective and not the, how did this really affect me? What were my emotions inside of that? And I, and I saw this trend of every major thing that happened to me in my life. I always took the perspective of, you know, there's people around me that go through so much, you know, worse than me. You know, my mom went through uh, sexual abuse from her father and that's part of her testimony. My dad was an orphan by 11. Like these people went through real stuff. And I would always have this difficulty of internalizing, well, how do I deal with my own stuff? And so as I got older and and had these conversations with my wife and, and some of my friends, I didn't really realize how much I was harboring down and, and now all of a sudden, no sleep, going through, you know, COVID, going through um, loss of friends due to uh, standing up for social justice, a lot of these things, family, realizing that, you know, your family is just as bad as some other people inside of, you know, these issues, all of this just boom, right? And that, who does that go to? Unfortunately, a lot of times it's the people that you love the most because they're there and you know they're going to be there. And so these, these blow up moments and, and by all means, my blow up moments aren't like, uh, uh, but it's when you're speaking to somebody who 99% of the time is even killed, kind leads with happiness and you see them, not that it, it affects, you know, you greatly. So, you know, I just, I'm thankful I have people around me who are honest. I'm thankful that when I, I act a certain way, I got people who love me enough to say, whoa, whoa, whoa this is how you're handling yourselves. And then honestly, it's looking back at yourself and saying, (laughs) is that how I'm handling myself? Because a lot of times I think we can handle ourselves in a way where we don't even understand the actions that are coming out of us because it's us, you know what I mean? It's, oh, there's no way I I meant it that way. There's no way I said that. And she's like, no, you you did. And so I think a lot of it is just dropping this cloak of pride or whatever we want to call it. And just being like, yeah, I am wrong. And yeah, I do need help. 
Um, and, and the fact that therapy isn't this like thing people need to be scared of either. You know, I think that the connotation behind therapy means something's wrong or I got it, you know, instead of just opening up and just saying, Hey, this is what I'm going through. And I, and I just need to talk about it and, and doing it freely in a way where, you know, I went into my therapy sessions, like, <laughs> get ready, buddy, because I'm giving it all to you. And, <laughs> and please just decipher what it is. Cause you know, I don't know how it's affecting me, but I do know this is the stuff I've gone through. Sure. No. And I, I, that's amazing that you shared with that. And I'm a huge believer. I, me and Josh say it all the time, you know, coaches need coaches, you know, even therapists need therapists. We all need help from the other side. Um, no matter what, you know, that's the only way you're going to get better, you know, and, and yeah. at the end of the day, sometimes yeah, you just need that person to hear you out and talk to you and just be there, you know, whether they're your label as your therapist or a friend, you just need somebody to talk to and be able to share these things with. It doesn't make you right or wrong. It just makes you a human, a person who yeah. has stuff whether they're good, bad, sad, happy, you know, um, successful failures, whatever it is, you know, we want to share these things, you know, and when you bundle them up inside, you know, you, you really, you really start seeing a different self when you feel a different self that, you know, is not probably the best because you can't share these things that you want to share with and not, or not understanding how to share them um, without, you know, hurting others, offending others or the people we love and rubbing off the wrong way. And, you know, many times it's like realizing like, okay, I do need that help or I need to create that awareness of I'm letting my emotions get the best of me. And now I'm pouring it out into people that, you know, don't deserve to, to t take this on or tackle this on because it's not fair to them, you know? So, you know, 100%, man, like, you know, I mean, Josh, we, you know, being in the health and fitness field, it's, it's just so important to just work on yourself all the time. And, you know, for a long time as well, like, look, I come from a divorced family as well. And it was one of those things, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that I wasn't sad as a kid. I wasn't saying that I wish my parents weren't together, but I did understand. I realized, you know, it, I rather them not be fighting and arguing mm -hmm. and forming all this, you know, shit show in front of us um, or hearing it. If it's going to be, if it, it, it's better, just keep more sanity separated um, then have that together. And, um, if it's going to bring more happiness and you know what, that's the key. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think like in anything, it, it still did affect me in some way in the sense of, you know, obviously, you know, you can't have your parents together for certain things you can have, you know, so for those things at the end of the day, we all are going to feel something whether or not from the divorce or not as kids. But overall, you know, I do have to appreciate, like you said, you know, they still love you. They still are your parents. They still showed up when they needed to show up for certain things. And, you know, they always maintained, you know, their parenthood the way it should be, whether they were doing it solo or together. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that you brought up is looking also to as the good, you know, and, and also saying like, hey, there is a lot of others out there that, you know, are going through a lot more than maybe what you are going yourself. So I, I'm 100%, man, you know, can relate yeah, with absolutely. a lot of those things. I know. Yeah, it's a, <clears throat> oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh -oh. oh, I was just going to say, you know, and I know for me, one of the most difficult things about even like opening up was I had always used this kind of, you know, angst and, in in um, you know, hardship that's gone on my personal life. I'm, I'm sure, you know, Mendez and I have talked about this too, you know, I you always use that as like the chip on my shoulder, the thing that always kept me motivated. Like, you know, I got to, you know, my dad was never in my, never in my life. Like, oh, I got to prove him wrong. Or I got to, you know, I got to prove yeah. the people that picked on me in high school wrong. And I got to show, you know, show them that I'm not the person that they, they, you know, characterized me out to be and all this stuff. And then once I was able to work through that, I was like, you know, for a second, like, well, well, now where do I get the motivation from? Mm -hmm. You know, now mm -hmm. everything that I've ever used as fuel to accomplish the things that I've accomplished aren't really there anymore, you know, or not definitely not at the level that they were at as I was going through that whole process of, you know, learning more about myself. So for me, that was really one of the biggest challenges. It wasn't even, you know, like you, I'm pretty free. Like, I don't really give a shit what people think about me. Like, I'll just tell you what I think or what's gone on. And you can infer, like, if you want to take that those experiences that have happened in my life, those traumas, and you want to turn that around as me being a bad person. Like, I know I'm not a bad person. So, you know, that's on you. Yeah. If you want to talk about it, we can. But, you know, for me, it was more of like that, that period after, 
was like, well, where do I, what's going to really drive me now? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then once I really was able to figure that out and, and go, okay, well, now I have all of this abundance in my life instead of the scarcity, right? I, I mm. moved away from the scarce mindset of these things I don't have into now a place where like the opportunities available to me are so much greater because I can have these positive relationships with people instead of always just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, yeah. you know, so... Because I look at that and, you know, it, it's interesting. My first emotion when you're explaining that is, is like a freshness, like a freedom, like a whew. Yeah. Because if we're not careful, Johnny that made fun of me in the middle of my eighth grade year could have pushed me in a direction of going after something to prove other people wrong when that direction might not have been my passion. It might have been the thing I just need to do to prove people wrong. Right. So when you're on the other side of that, you're like, oh, wow, cool. I can focus on whatever it is that, you know, I'm excited to focus on. Yeah. That's very interesting. I never thought of it from that perspective before. It's funny because at the same time, like, I know we had another podcast. We were talking about some of these things, but I feel like also to in moments, different stages, different ages in your life, there are times where you need some of those little things to get you out of certain holes that you're in. You know, you need some of those little you know, whether it might not be the best way to be motivated, but I feel like there's certain stuck moments in your life where it's, you're in a situation when you know this can get you out of this by you being, using this as the energy to force you out and make you fall into a better position. I think that those moments are crucial to be able to use some of those things as motivation to get you out of certain stages in your life. And then when it becomes a problem is when you carry them on always because it's always then something you're dragging with you that's heavy. Then it becomes something tiring or out, um, burning you out, always on your mind, stressing you because you always have to prove what you always have to prove. And I think it's when you turn that, that thing that you started with and you let it drag on for too long, I think that's when it becomes a problem, you know? And I think it's kind of like, you have to kind of find somewhere in the middle is find that shift of like, awesome. I use this to get me out of this. I'm not in this anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I need to shift my motivation and not be motivated off of this energy that yes, it was great. It got me here, but it's still not the best reason to keep pushing to the, my next levels that I want to get to, because if not, it's just going to over consume me in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, I look back on my life and there's so many things that I can tell you that I felt stagnant in. I mean, shoot, my modeling career, uh, going on 11 years, absolutely love it. I, I love every second of it. But if you don't, if you're not careful, you find yourself being really absorbent of opportunities and not aggressive to go get them. Because the, what, what it is for me is I wake up in the morning, I check my emails. Oh, is there castings today? Do I need to do this? And if not, then I can kind of go about my other stuff. And now, because that industry has shut down, you know, for, since, since the um, pandemic, now it's very much like I get to go be so proactive, so in the DMs, researching companies, sending them proper messages that says, hey, this is who I am. This is what I would want, you know, work with you and those things. So, I mean, I see a huge change in myself and, and a lot of that has to do with becoming a father as well and understanding that, you know, my wife and I were both very, you know, she's very driven, very intelligent. Um, she does really well for herself. And so on that front, I never felt the pressure of needing to be more than 50, 50, you know, we both come to the table, we both support each other. Now, when the baby came into the picture, I'm like, oh, okay. Now there's a whole nother entity. You know, my wife's a full-time student. And so she's pulling herself a little bit away from the workforce to go into school. And if I say that I support her and I say, I want you to go do school. And I say, I want to be this person who uplifts your dreams. I better be showing that on the back end of supporting the family in this front. So I just started seeing these natural things, like you said, that started pulling me out of this hole of complacency. Um, I, mediocrity, I think, is a major word that, you know, I think I, at post sports, I think I fell into a bit. Um, during playing ball, I was like, you're not going to outwork me. But like you said before, once, once you got past the, the fact of, of pulling other people's energy into your own energy. Once I was done with sports, I'm like, what the heck do I do? You right. know, what, what is it? Where do I pull this, mm -hmm. this hard working mentality and put it into? Um, and honestly, I think, you know, that's something where I really haven't realized. And, and, 
until the, 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 fa- the past, you know, three months of like, y- you're always looking at all this other stuff. And I literally was down in my basement sitting there, I had, you know, I have a makeshift uh, workout like room built up so I can train all my clients in an at-home environment. And I'm looking around the room. I'm like, there's auto the fitness invention. I've, I've put so much time, money and energy into there's my baby. There's my wife. Like I have all I need to be as successful as I want to be. If I can just harness the energy and the right things, clients, you know, like building out my programming, boom, auto, like these things are like, that's all I need. And so I was just always, I'm an idea guy. So it's like, always like, let me grab this patent. Let me do this. And and really, it's just harnessing all of that back into specific things. And once I started doing that, that's when I started seeing like massive growth. Um, and then giving a product that deserves to have massive growth behind it. I think right. that's the other key. So, so CJ, I really want to ask you, um, just because I love hearing the, the different answers from, you know, other guests that we, we touch upon this topic. But um, I know it seems like, you know, from the therapy, from some, a lot of this awareness, a lot of the things that you've, you've done and grown with during this time of COVID, I'm a huge, Josh and I, we believe like during this COVID time, there's been so much time to be able to create awareness, I think, in anybody's own space. And um, I think we can both agree on that. It, it really also determines truly on, on the person who decides whether I'm going to take these opportunities or not during the time that I'm given and presented to me right now. Regar- this is not regarding people who have obviously people have suffered, lost their jobs, have gone through certain things. Don't wish that upon anybody. But at the same time, I think that if you look at it in the other way, I think COVID could be also be a blessing in disguise where it has given a lot of people thought, awareness, opportunity, growth, um, and just time for themselves to think and really see what they really want to do with their lives. And then those who have done something and are doing something right now are seeing a lot of things come into fruition, obviously yourself being. What was that moment for you in COVID that was like, I need to do something. I need to, I need to do this for me. I need to change things up. Um, I need to take advantage of this time and not wait for something to fall on my lap. Yeah. I, I remember a specific conversation. I was walking with Bree. We were at her parents' uh, beach house. And it was one of those first moments where we felt like we were able to get out of the environment we were in, go to another safe environment. But that safe environment had a beach attached to it. And for me, that's like light, sand, water. Like that's where I really find a lot of- like, Hey, we live in life. Miami. We understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we get it. Yeah, I know. We get I know, it. I'm so jealous. I've been trying um, to get him to move to South Beach so he could be closer to the beach, but yeah. he's not having any of that. <laughs> hey, man, I've lived there for a little bit. It's yeah, not yeah. A bad, it's not a bad option. <laughs> yeah. Someone's listening well, to this. Well, we might catch of... in Miami again or no? Oh, once all this stuff's done, absolutely. Uh, hey, you're, you're always more than yeah. welcome. Always yeah, my welcome. family's in Florida and yeah, definitely. Oh, well, part. Uh, my, I grew up in Deerfield Beach. Okay, and nice. Then, yeah, we I went to, to grad school I at like, FAU. I went to grad school. Oh, at yeah, find another yeah. university. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you guys have the one thing I love about FAU, though, is that That's like fun. you have like one of the, the toughest mascots. Yeah, the owl. Yeah. Well, listen, my undergrad, my undergrad is not much better. I went to Syracuse for undergrad, so we're the orange. Oh yeah. You know, oh, not, and, and good luck finding an orange tree in Syracuse, New York. It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, it's true. You're not gonna find yeah. one anywhere. I don't think I've ever seen an orange owl either. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah um, it's okay. Both are good schools. I'm just, I'm just busting your chops a bit. That's all right. I take it personal. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now I totally forgot the question. No, I'm just playing. So I was walking with, uh, I was walking with Bree next to the beach and, you know, I was just going over my situation with her and, you know, because I did invent the product and because I, you know, there's some things I was putting my money into, I found myself in a pretty interesting spot in terms of debt. Mm-hmm. And I was in the most debt I've ever been in in my life. Probably one of the most worst times you could ever be in debt. I'm um, going into a pandemic, a lot of, you know, my, one of my major industries, I was making money shut down and, you know, we just got to talk and she's like, let's just make a plan. Let's make a plan how to get this down. And uh, fortunately, one of my good buds, um, he's a managing director at Goldman. And I was just able to really talk to him about finances and like just really the structure of paying down debt in a proper way. Credit card, 20% interest rate compared to one that has 10, cranking out where you need to be cranking it out. 
Um, and then what I noticed is that as I started to work harder, duh, you make more money, uh, which means you can put more money into, you know, paying things down. And I just started this cycle of like, wow, okay, this working harder, not only is reaping me the benefits of money, it's actually making me feel better. It's making my wife know that the goals and stuff that we put in place are important to me. And it just started building this momentum in the direction of that. And then I realized, holy crap, four months later, here I am in a position where if I can keep, if I just keep this momentum going, you know, the end of, I'll be debt free by the goal I had in mind, which was a very aggressive goal. And I'll be able to put money away and, 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 and then own completely fully own debt free auto, all of that stuff. And so like, honestly, it, it's the same stuff you would think of a business plan. It's the same stuff you did just just put it down, make it a goal. Um, and it's also really awesome to have a good support system. I mean, with Bree being huge. there to support me. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's huge. I can tell that's amazing friends. on you guys. Um, you know, definitely I'm sure, you know, you guys as a couple probably can share a ton of amazing learning lessons and stories and, and give a lot oh, yeah. of great experiences for other couples out for there sure. too. I want to, I want to touch, sorry, go ahead. No, go no, ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, she's literally changed my life. I mean, it's important that you add that in there. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. No, it is. Especially yeah. if she's no, going to listen. It's very important. Listen. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. well, it's just like, you know, I, I can't stress enough how I've gone this way in a relationship before and down and become somebody I, I didn't want to become or the Been there. Bree is taking me to this level of the, just, I, I finally feel like a man, if that makes sense, like a full yeah. circle good man. You know? mm, yeah, no, I mean, I've been on the other side of that, right. Where, where, you know, I was, I was married. I've, I'm going through a divorce now and, you know, not feeling that support system there when, you know, when you're married, as you know, you know, and, and you're the male in, in the relationship, like the emphasis is on you to really produce and perform and internally more than anything, right? Like you want to be the support system. You want to be the rock emotionally, financially, you know, vocationally, whatever it may be, like you said, right? You want to be able to support your wife so that she can, she can go out and reach her goals, right? She can reach her Absolutely. dreams and, and you guys can live the life that you guys have always dreamt about together, right? As one cohesive unit with your, with your family, with your son now, you know, I didn't, I didn't have that, you know, and that was so emotionally draining because it, it was always like I was just reaching out for someone to grab my arm and pull me out of the water when I was drowning, you know, emotionally, like when I, you finally think you have that connection with someone that's going to be able to help you, you know, maybe like you said with your wife, right? Like come to the realization that you should seek help right? Come to the realization that you are, you are a good person. You are the person that, you know, you've always stro strived to be, you know, you've you're already there when you don't have that in a marriage. It's like, Oh my God, you know, like, yeah. you know, you're like always at, you're always short of breath, you know? So <laughs> it's amazing to, it's, it's amazing to hear uh, your side, right? Where you do have that, that connection and you do have that support system with your wife, because, I think, you know, and the divorce rate in America is, is, you know, greater than, than the amount of percentage of people that stay together. So, yeah. you know, I know I'm not alone in that, that seeking of, you know, acknowledgement of, or, or, or even love, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I want to bring it back to, you know, a point that you made a little bit ago where you said, you know, I was saying all these things, but it wasn't until I really channeled my energy and put them all into like actual action. Right. Cause I feel like people say that people definitely say a lot of things. People might be doing a lot of things, but they're not taking appropriate action. Hmm. You know, it's not channeled. Yeah. It's just, it's yeah. just a, a chaotic scramble of randomized events mm -hmm. that they're trying oh, to yeah. piece together into this complicated puzzle that leads to success when it really doesn't work like that. If you don't have the intention behind your actions, then they're, they're never going to bring upon the results that you want to see. Absolutely. You know, yeah, was, if anybody listening to this, uh, my hands raised cause I'm guilty. <laughs> I think we all are. Yeah, that was all. just said. Yeah. I think we all are. I mean, he, he always yells. I mean, Mendez yells at me all the time about, you know, same thing you were talking about, like channeling energy, putting it into sales, like yeah. connecting with clients. You know, I'm the worst at that. 
the worst. <laughs> but he'll tell you. I'm ter- I come at him with a with hundred excuses every day on why I'm not doing the things he tells me I should be doing. You know, but I'm finally now, you know, in my career, I, I appreciate having him as a business partner for the podcast because- and vice versa. Thank mm. you. Appreciate that, bud. You know, yeah, just but, in case he listens today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just in case I, I don't listen. I don't like to hear my own voice. <laughs> but you know, it's nice to have that person there to acknowledge that you know you do have the the characteristics to succeed. Yeah. You do have the capabilities. You have everything you need. Now, fucking go after it. You know, yeah, you know, do the things that you say you, you want to accomplish. Yeah, she. Uh, I remember saying to her, "I was just like, thank you for believing in me." And, it's so powerful, uh, man. It really is. Yeah, she. That's the stuff that makes me, I don't know, man, I get super emotional about it. And and Mendez, I'm sure you can, you know, tap into this too. You know, you think of this is a human who has one life and they chose to spend it with you. That's, that, that's not light on me, man. I, I, I feel the depth of that. And I think watching my parents' relationship and how that ended, I used to always say, I never want to get married. I just don't want to get married. Uh, I'll meet a great woman. I'll uh, we'll have kids. And and then the, the, the opposite side of that is my faith, right? So, you know, if coming from a Christian faith base, you're like, oh, okay, well, marriage, this, these kind of things. So it's like this contradictory of what I was saying and what I was feeling. And, and that's just confusion of saying, well, I don't want that marriage. Um, so, you know, I didn't take it lightly going into this relationship. You know, we did some things that we, when, and this is just another testament of like how amazing Brie is. But when, when we first started dating, I was reading this book uh, by Levi Lusco called Swipe Right. And it just talks about how waiting uh, to, to take steps into your relationship, uh, how it can yield like really positive fruit. So for example, obviously inside of the faith, you know, Christian faith, it's wait till marriage. Um, I did a good job of not paying attention to, to that, that rule. Um, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. In, my, in my relationship with Brie, because I was reading this book that talked about it, she went and actually bought the book, read it. I didn't really even know she was reading it. And then she's like, so what's your thoughts on that book? And I was like, you know, I've never fully tried it, but I've, I've always wanted to. And she's like, no, I, I agree with that too. So we waited till we were married. And for us, it was absolutely incredible because it just helped build this foundation uh, in a relationship that I just never had. I never had that foundation. I didn't know what it was like to build a relationship just strictly off of getting to know the person, the depths of them, understanding them, fully before you ever get physical because a lot of times my relationships would start with like oh my god so hot then you do it and you're like wow she was really good at that and then like my emotions got wrapped up in the physical and then as that once down the road starts fading out a bit you're like oh where's the structure of our relationship oh wow we can't even talk about this but i was telling you all like how much i love you here um, so I think for us, and, and we're not the couple that's like, you need to do this, but for us, it was incredible. And, and so we, we look at our relationship and we're like, well, yeah, we should have a strong found, a foundation and a base of what we go off of. And when, when our arguments happen, it's never like, oh my God, I, I, I want to get out of this marriage. It's like, oh, how can we figure out how, how to get you know, her to where she needs to be? Or do I need to apologize? So we always come back to this place of, Let's work through it. Um, doesn't mean that we get there right away. You know, there's sometimes she's like, I need my space. And I'm like, okay, I, I understand that and vice versa. But it always comes back to that level of like, we know where our, our foundation is in this. Um, and so that, that's, been, that's been great. And I think I carry that over now to friendships, a lot of things, you know, like really not just taking that kind of communication and just keep it in your marriage. It's like, no, this needs to be business. This needs to be friendships, you know? Yeah. You have to be, you have to be open and honest, you know, across across the board or, or you don't, you don't get to that place where you can benefit fully. You know, everyone can benefit fully from the relationship or the business or anything. We, you know, I mean, Mendes will tell you, I'm brutally honest with him when you know i'm not happy brutally honest to mm-hmm. almost to a fault you know <laughs> almost to it luckily he you know he's known me for as long as he has and be like, okay dickhead like you know i got what you're saying now <laughs> sit in that chair and and we'll, we'll get started you know yeah, but yeah. it is it is so important honesty and, and being true to who you are and you know understanding the other person and who they really are mm. because if you don't i mean 
You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a testament to those, those arguments that you were talking about can get real fiery if you don't have that common ground of, at the end of the day, I have to go to bed with you. Yep. You know, yeah. like not, not in the sense of like, I have to have sex with you, but like, I have to go to sleep next to you and I have to wake up next to you for the rest of my life. For forever. For forever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ho- hopefully, yeah. right. Hopefully, you know, That's for those goal. listening. Yeah. Or, or watching, right? They they don't go through what I go through because it, you know, it was a traumatic experience. I'm glad I had people like Mendes in my life mm-hmm. and my clients and my friends to help get me out of that because it, it, you know, divorce and, and separation is a is a very dark place to be in, yeah. you know, and it's it's hard to see the out. It's hard, like like you, you know, I even went through. I mean, I still I joke about it now, but it was really a thought in my head like I'm never getting married again, like mm-hmm. not ne- never. Like, I can't go through this again. I can't even take the risk of going through that. And after talks with, with you know, him and, and you know, because obviously he has a, a great relationship with Jenny and, and their daughter's amazing. I, I love Stella. She's, you know, she brightens up my day when I see her. She's not even my kid. And I, I, love, I love seeing her. She brings joy to my life. Uncle Josh over here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep it that way. Um, yeah. For now. Yeah. You know, so. Oh, the divorce guy? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I know why Jenny makes him, why she's always with, with us. But no, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just joking. Earmuffs, Jenny, don't. Earmuffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, it is really important that you have that support system, right? Or that you go find that support system. If you don't have it, it doesn't have to come from your family. I don't have, you know, I love my sister. I love my mother, but we've had a very rocky relationship over the years, you know, be, mainly because, like you were talking about these childhood traumas, like the emphasis was m- more on me being a father and being like the husband to my mom than it was being the brother and the son, mm, you know? Okay. So that took that whole aspect away from me, that whole, you know, being able to just be a young adolescent boy and not have to deal with like, how is your sister going to eat? Who's going to cook her dinner? Who's picking her up from school? Who's taking her to practice? You know, who's yeah, being a yeah. good role model for her outside of just being a brother? You know, all of those yeah. things were, were something I had to deal with. And now being old enough to look back and I go, wow, like, you know, I understand why I really am the way I am now. A lot more than, you know, when I was 22 or 23, mm-hmm. you know, I can now going into, you know, going into argue, like if I have a fight or an argument with someone, I can in the, even in the moment, take a step back and go, okay, like where are your biases coming from? You know, where's your ego coming into play? Where are you trying to overstep your boundaries? Like you had, you were forced to do when you were younger, you know, even if you didn't want to, now you, now you have a choice to overstep those boundaries or not. Why do you continually take that path instead of allowing the other person to bring like you were saying before with your finances, bring that other 50% to the relationship or the friendship or, or the, the, the partnership in business, right? Allow that other person to bring 50% and meet them halfway. And then if they only can bring 40% one time, then you can step up when you need to, you know, and, and there's going to be yeah. times where they're going to have to step up. For sure. No, yeah, this, absolutely. I, think, I think this is all truly, truly, um, you know, very, very informational and, and, and great in, and great value to, for a lot of people out here who have, you know, their relationships with their significant other or with friends, family members. And I think also too, it's understanding like one of the things that, you know, me and Jenny, we, Josh can tell you, we went through a lot of roller coaster rides, like from almost breaking up to like, you know, that, okay, we're broken up, but it's really like a fake breakup. You're not really <laughs> broken up you know, that bullshit. And then um, you're back at it the next day, like if nothing happened or in a week or whatever. (laughs) So I've gone through that. And I really have to say that, you know, no, we had her on our podcast. I had, you know, me and Jenny had a coach um, who helped with our relationship, um, a lot of areas as well. Um, And obviously, like in anything, you had to put into practice. And, you know, a lot of it was, you know, emotional intelligence, um, creating boundaries, non-negotiables, all that good stuff. And, you know, we, we were doing well for a while and then, you know, baby time, you know, pregnancy, all that stuff kind of slipped away again, back at it, you know, craziness, rough time. And then, you know, it was, it was an ongoing roller coaster of good and bad, good and bad. And, you know, honestly, I have to say like in the last few months, it's it, it, probably like in the, in the whole, since the beginning of COVID, I think a lot of things have shifted where, you know, 
being, you know, being there uh, from home a lot more, you know, getting to talk more with, with her. Cause you know, you're in a position where now that's the only who the person you're with all the time, even more because you're not <laughs> working, you know, her and my little one. Uh, so I think it's just like, we were able to communicate a lot more. And I think it was one of those things that you said that it was so important, like take time to really get to know your partner and really take time before diving into the physical and all this other stuff. And I think part of what was missing with us is we, ne- we, we communicated, but we didn't really communicate and we were able to communicate. You were talking, we were more, talking. Than, more than communicating. Yeah. And we really got to like get into deep conversations during this COVID and we had more time for it. And, you know, we kind of step back, restructure some of our foundations and try to put in place some of our non-negotiables, even though we're not perfect today, but we try our best to stick to them and, and, and really work on that and, and, and hold each other accountable with that. I wanted to ask you, if you don't mind sharing, what are some of the staple non-negotiables in your relationship, your marriage, that you feel hold you guys strongly together? And what are some of the non-negotiables that you feel that, you know, everybody has their own opinion, but what do you feel are some of the ones that every couple should have in place if they want to have a good relationship or marriage with their partner? Yeah, yeah it's an incredible question. I, um, we went through marriage prep and going into marriage prep, I, I, Brie had thought that you're supposed to be engaged going into marriage prep. I had thought you go to marriage prep to make sure engagement is the right step, right? <laughs> so she's like, everybody's going to be engaged and, and we're not. I'm like, no way. We walk in, they're like, so who's engaged? Everybody's like, Pfft. and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah, so you were right, huh? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> one of the things that I, <laughs> I loved about it was, it allowed you to go so deep into topics that most people don't even talk about prior to marriage. Like, you know, like spanking your kids, you know, like, like who's better in finances, just in, you know, non-negotiables, a lot of these kind of things. And one of the books they had us read is the five love languages. Like Mm. really where does your, your, your person pull from, you know, is that physical touch? Is that, you know, acts of service and and understanding those uh, have helped us so much because if you say, Hey baby, can you go do the yard? And you pop your head out every once in a while and you say, wow, that looks amazing. You're doing great. I'll stay in the dang yard and do yard work all yep. day. But if I come in from doing yard work all day and the first thing you say to me is like, Oh, well, are you going to do this? And it, I, I like, we'll go live it. Yep. You know, I'm like, the same way. Like, me too. hundred yeah, percent. Like, like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, are you, that's, are that's you kidding you me? To? You know, so like, like I just knocked off 12 things you asked me to do in the time it should take me six. And you're to ask me to do the 13th already. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need like, to all right. Yeah. I'm going to go for a walk. Yeah. I'm going to go for a you walk. Know what I mean? like, and that's, huh? and that's like understanding that and communicating that will save a crap ton of arguments down the road. So I think um, in terms of non-negotiables, the thing that one of my favorite takeaways that we both really agreed upon uh, in marriage prep was God first, yourself second, so then you can bring each other, a, a, a person in the marriage that is meant to be there. And then your spouse or husband third, then your children, then your family. And that has been an incredible stable for us because we've gone through some major, 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 major things with our families since we've been married or even dating where I used to think of my family as this amazing asset to relationships. And now they're, they're a huge liability in this specific relationship. And if it wasn't for us putting those things first, all of a sudden your family is above your counterpart. And if you're not careful with that, that your, your, your relationship has no, no chance. You know, it's something I really want to point out real quick, and I'm sorry for, for interrupting, but Mm -hmm. I I find it interesting. And I really love how you put you said you're, you're God and then you're, you, you, you guys together as a partner and then children. Yeah. You know, usually you see partners, they'll put their children always first. My mother did that. And I think that also yeah. too is a, is a part of that. A lot can go wrong because, you know, if you don't work with your partner and you guys don't try to be the best versions of yourselves by taking care of each other, how can you show up for your kids? on a high level, how can you be an inf- a true influence for your kids and how can you be able to both work together efficiently for your kids? And I think bringing that up is so powerful because I think in, yeah, as a normal thing automatically, and even you would even now yourself, like, of course I'd put my kids first for everything. Like you would think that you would always say that automatically if in this or something happened, whatever it is, 
but I think it's so true what you said. And, and I think it's going to help a lot of couples out there listening to this. Like you need to focus on your partnership first so you can be the best versions for your kid. It's the same thing when you're working for when you're working on yourself, if you're not selfish for yourself to be the best version, healthy, healthy wise, business wise, like the best version of you in an unhealthy way, how can you show up and be the best version for your partner or for anybody else, yeah. your family, your friends, right. if you're not even the best for your own health, for your own careness? Um, and I think that was very, very um, important that you brought that up. Yeah, you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. You know, I've been saying that a lot lately to a lot of people, yeah. taking care, you know, especially. You would know, Mendes knows, you know, like the people that, even the people we train, right? High, high achievers, really high achievers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, take a step back for a second, man. Like, you know, you're doing all of these things so that you can, you know, make sure your business grows so that you can, you know, uh, employ the people that you need to continue to employ. And you want to take care of your nephew because your sister can't or, or, you know, your, your niece or whoever it may be. It's like, but like you were mentioning earlier, right? about therapy like what are you doing to take care of yourself right what what are you doing for yourself so that you can enjoy all the hard work that you've been putting in you know do you even like for me walks have been a huge thing like even just Mm -hmm. taking 30 minutes so that i can go for a walk yeah Yeah. you know regardless of everything i have to do throughout the day like take that 30 minutes you know we talk about it with exercise you know we've been slammed with this podcast and slammed with our personal businesses and our workouts have suffered it's like well why do we allow that to happen? You know, that's something that we enjoy. That's something that, you know, like you were saying, brings a greater sense of who we are and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, greater clarity to, to our purpose in life. And when I, I personally removed myself from that and I wasn't training like I normally train, you know, the way I even thought about myself suffered. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, if if I think about, yeah, if I think about, myself in that negative light how how am i going to think about other people Mm -hmm. yeah and and you're you're we're in a business that practice what you preach you know Mm -hmm. um and i think you know for me when i started looking at my clients or i call them friends you know i don't even yeah yeah, family family. nah it's so tough yeah and so you know when i started looking at it as fitness will be a byproduct of the better person that we make you throughout this process. Like that you're, you're going to naturally get the results you want because we're, we're in the process of doing that stuff together. But what I've, what, what have been my best, most favorite moments? Well, for example, like I, I have uh, one friend that I have, you know, was a client now, you know, friend. Yeah. Um, his name's Mark. And, you know, I met him because I was training my friend's husband in the building and he was doing the, the rower and you know how the rower kicks up air mm-hmm. and i'll just like keep going man this feels great you know like my hair is blowing like it just felt so awesome and then you know i could see him kind of cir- circling around and then when i was done with training he's like hey so what's the deal like do you train people here so that's kind of how we met but um he would he worked on 59th and second and i lived on 61st and second so we would he would leave bloomberg we write to my friend worked for bloomberg day my friends yeah, used to live know. off of like 51st and 2nd, right? In oh, yeah. Area. yeah. My neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Right by Bloomingdale's where Rachel from Friends Park. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Hi, Rachel. <laughs> he's like, stop waving to her. Yeah. <laughs> She's not yeah. even real, babe. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> hey. Put your sunglasses hey. back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, we used to walk across the park and, and he would be so like worked up and tense from, from his job. Cause there's so much brain power goes into it. And by the time we get to the other side of the park, he would be decompressed. He would have seen, seen me at that point, say hi to probably 75 people on the wall. You know, very like, Hey, how are you? Hey. And his wife said to me one time, she goes, CJ, when Mark came home and told me how expensive training was going to be, I was like, absolutely not. And she goes, but I can sense something in Mark where he really wanted to do something of this nature. And she goes, I look back at it now. And she goes, I'm, it's a different man. This man is kinder. He smiles. He talks to more people. His confidence, like she starts naming off all these things. And I'm like, that, that's it. Like, that's the purpose of this, right? And if that can be the way I handle myself with my clients, it should be able to, the way I handle myself with my friends, my marriage. Like this, this is what we should be pouring in to the people who are around us, 
in general. So, so let me ask you, um, you know, you bringing that point up, I think is so important where a lot of people don't sometimes realize all the amazing benefits that you get out of your health and fitness um, beyond the aesthetics or, you know, oh, just, you know, moving or feeling a certain way, which is great. But all these other components you mentioned, mentioned are amazing. What do you drive in with your clients? How do you go about that? And, and, and what's your way of approaching them um, when it comes to this lifestyle approach? Yeah, fun. Like, I got to make this fun. Like we have to, this has to be, like, it doesn't have to be, but my approach is like, how can we make this where Thursday is here, you wake up Thursday and you're like, I cannot wait for my session tonight with CJ, you know? And like, um, and honestly, I just think that's like allowing them to see you. Like, look, the knowledge is there. We put in the time and the effort to get our certifications, right? We put in the time and the effort to make us able to, to make what we make off of a session, right? Um, but I think once these people also know that you're in it, like I don't take on every client that comes knocking on my door. Like mm. I have the, uh, you know, I take time to get to like, how are we going to, to mesh? Like, and if not, if it's not going to be a good mesh, I'll pass them to somebody that I know. But I know that if I'm going to take time away from my wife, my son, my world to come down here, I'm going to give you every ounce of me and you give me every ounce of you. And this thing is going to be something successful, right? And it doesn't need to be just, you know, obviously I take your goals into mind and we're going to get there. But once that kind of is understood and it's not this transactional, here's the, here's the money, here's your training, I, client retention becomes longer. You all of a sudden are at your client's weddings. You know, these people become parts of your life where, and look, that's, that's how I see it. I don't necessarily think that's always everybody's, you know, dynamic or where they need to go. But that's how I feel like I've been able to grow a client base that I don't even see it as work. I get to go down tonight. I get to go down and hang out with three of my buddies back to back to back, you know, like literally the first 15, 20 minutes of our session is just chopping it up. I have to remember to be like, Oh shoot. Oh, I forget all the time. I forget. I'm like, Oh shit. You're actually working oh, out yeah. here. Oh, oh yeah, God. Sorry. Oh. Wait, wait. All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, we get to where we're going, but Brie, you know, what it also is exposed to Brie is that Brie, you know, doesn't love personal training as much as I do. And she yes. that out by listening to me. And she's like, yeah. you just had so much fun. And it realized, it helped me realize that that's not where I'm trying to go in my career. So, so you know. with that being said, I know you brought up about, you know, be, Brie not being so into it as you are, of course, it's your profession, it's what you love to do. Just something thought in my head just because I, I especially seeing the dynamic you have um, between you and her, I think it's amazing, the communication. Obviously, we all have issues, and that's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. Any marriage that doesn't have issues, I think that's a bigger problem. Um, oh, yeah, we have plenty. So <laughs> we all do. So I want to ask you for all those out there, you know, even including myself, I've gone through it. What is, and if you've had this happen to you, how do you approach or how do you go about or – I don't know if she is, but have you had situations where you and your profession, health, fitness, training, modeling, on magazines, personality, on brands, have you had situations with your significant other where there might be some form of jealousy, where there's some form of like, I don't, I don't like you coaching so-and-so people, you know, these women are being around this, or has that happened to you have how do if it has how do you handle it and for those now who might be going through that what's the best approach to handle that as a male yeah. coach he's a year too know. late for me man Can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he's like dang i needed this yeah i needed this a oh, year shit, ago dude. Fuck. where was cj yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is an expensive this is an expensive podcast Ooh. for me y'all yeah, um, yeah. I see, I see, see CJ gets those pre and post NATO clients. Yeah, don't send. And he's talking about a storm about. about listen, don't send us, don't send us an invoice for my therapy, okay, please? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I'm one of those people who's, I always used to say perception's reality, right? So, like, if I'm, the example I used to give my friends is if I'm in the club, I don't go to the club anymore, but when I used to be in that, if I'm in the club and this girl's really close to me and, and she's in my ear and I'm talking into her ear and even though that's the only way to really communicate because it's so loud and I, if I'm in her ear and I'm giggling, I could be talking about my wife. But if my wife's friend's also in the club and she looks over, I'm just a guy giggling into another girl's ear, 
right? Facts. So like, I yep. didn't want, uh, you don't want that creeping into your relationship in other areas of your life, right? So for me, in terms of this, if I'm communicating about everything else, I need right out of the gates to understand how you feel. Are you anti me having girl clients? You know, and I tend to not necessarily wrap myself up into the world of having girl clients in general, but there has been some in, in, in the recent future where I have, I have a, a few more than I've ever had, if that makes sense. Um, that said, the, you know, our relationship is, is so open and so transparent. And this is the first relationship I've ever been in where like honesty has been taken to a level of like, we both honor honesty as like one of the, the non-negotiable things where like, is so ironclad. We're like, that's not even an option to even think that stuff. Right. Right. Um, but that said, my relationship with her, number one, something comes up where you feel this is bothering you. It's done. You know, like yeah. I'm, I'm training right now to go on a challenge, potentially back on the MTV challenge show. Hell yeah. To do one last Let's hurrah. go. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. And so Ooh, like, we'll I told her straight you, up. Oh, thanks man. Yeah. I'm amped for it. I told her, I was like, look, I'll do all this training. I'll do all this stuff. But the moment you, if you say to me, you don't feel comfortable with me leaving, or if there's something going on in our lives where it just doesn't match up, you tell me that it's off the table. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like you're my yeah. number one priority. And you know, that number one priority has <clears throat> led to diff <clears throat> difficult conversations with, you know, our family members and, and certain things, because like, this is my number one. And like, if you guys right. don't understand that, like, these are the things that you're met with a CJ you're never met before because you guys used to be that priority and now mm -hmm. she is. And For therefore sure. like she gets the nod and you guys have to abide by our, our, you know, rules. So never will a client ever come near the priority of my family or my wife, you know, yeah. that said, but I also choose clients that I know don't have that character that are even close to like, thinking this is anything other than either friendship or clients. It's not, a, not a relationship building like that. If you, you know, what I'm right. Saying. Yeah. I mean, to, I mean, to, to both of those points, right. Like, you know, my wife, my ex-wife was, or is Argentinian, right. Didn't speak very much English when, when we first met and I'm from bumblefuck upstate New York where everyone is white Catholic, like straight up, yeah. 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 you know? Yeah. So for my family, it was, a, you know, even to this day, I don't really think, I mean, given it didn't work out, but they were never very supportive at all. And it was a huge strife in, in my marriage, you know, where they were always battling and pushing me in a direction that I didn't want to go in or I didn't mm. want my marriage to head it. Mm. And it got to the point where I had to tell them like, we're not going to talk for a while because you guys got to either accept that I'm going to be with her and I'm happy being with her, even though you might only see whatever bad shit that you want to see. You, you're not here every day. You don't see the good things that I see. You don't see the positives that I see in her or the potential that I see in her with the direction that she wants to head in, you know? And, and I think that, you know, for those of you listening or, or watching, right. If you're one of those people who don't agree with someone in your family doing something, it's none of your fucking business. Preach. You know, it's Preach, none of man. your business. You're Let them adult. live their life. Let them make the mistakes they're going to make. You can maybe chime in with some advice, but it's not your position to yeah. make those decisions for them in their lives. And if yeah. they don't want to accept your advice the first time and they don't want to accept your advice the second time, stop fucking giving it to them. You yeah. know? Yeah. And on, I, I and it's, it's so, dude, the biases that people carry right? and want you to carry them with them. Right. Like it's, it's just, it's difficult for me because I'm, I'm in an interracial uh, marriage as well. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I've, I've dealt with a ton of this in terms of uh, just the world we live in. But, you know, right. I look at it and I, this, this exact topic, and I'm so thankful you bring it up, is why Bree and I have a conversation even about our son and how we want to raise him. And, and this is his, he's, his, he's going to be his own man, his own human. Like, yes, we want to instill with him love and, and, and kindness. And, and this is how we feel you should treat other humans. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, like if you're interested in chess, well, I'm not going to impose my love for, for kicking footballs on you. It would be great to see you go to college and be a kicker. But like, if that's not what you want to do, like, why am I going to impose my, my bias and my view on this world on you? Like you, you got to let them, you got to let them have like, and especially with your family back yeah. to like who you should be with and who you should not. Thank you for your opinion. Now, fuck that's off. All it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? yeah. It's just, 
Yeah. And, you know, to your point about like being in the club and having, you know, one of your wife's friends see, you know, you talking to a girl, my ex-wife was a bottle server. She worked in nightlife. And when we first started dating, it was a massive struggle for me, you know, having a girlfriend at the time Not you know, now, you know, my future ex-wife, but, um, you know, having her be so attractive and having her be in a position where people's, you know, even though she, you know, I don't drink, she doesn't drink. Mm -hmm. She was never, you know, put, going to put herself into a position where she would, you know, even think about doing something to harm me or our marriage. That thought got in my head and it made me super jealous. And it wasn't until, mm -hmm. you know, and we would have argument after argument of like, you know, well, you were supposed to be home at six. How come you had to be? Well, I was, you know, how come you were here at 630? Oh, well, you know, they asked me to stay late to help with the bar tab, all this stuff. Like, oh, uh, really? That's what, it, you know? And then I was like, why would, you know, it really took me sitting down and, and realizing like, why would she do that? You know, yeah. like she's coming home every night. Yeah. She's coming yeah. home every night, every single Instead time. Instead of right? glorifying her for her hard work and what she was adding to the relationship. Exactly. I mean, imagine what she would feel like. Right. It's back exactly. To you saying I just did 13 things. And right. You're going to, you're 12 and you're going to ask me my 13th. It's kind of her perspective. Right. So having that trust, right. That someone is going to do the right thing. Like if they do the wrong thing, okay, then you deal with it in the moment. Right. But you can't go into a relationship or into a marriage in particular thinking that they're going to do the wrong thing. You have to expect yeah. them to do the right thing because they care about you and they care about exactly, you know, your marriage or your relationship heading in the right direction. Yeah. Cause you also don't want to push them in that direction either. Right. Like, right. Which you're, is a hundred percent what happens every time. Right. You know, like you're yelling at me for something I didn't do. And why wouldn't I not just do it if I've already hidden the consequences for it? Yeah. I, I mean, was just like, how I would do it, but right. I was just luckily lucky that my wife didn't like to have sex in general, let alone, <laughs> let alone, let alone with some random guy wait, from the club. You know? Wait, you yeah. said she's Argentinian. He's like, well, right. no, well, it was good when we first started dating. We had a lot, see, to your point about waiting, we had a lot of sex in the beginning, a lot. Yeah, yeah. And then once we got married, it, that kind of drifted off. But, yeah. I think Josh is going to wait a long time for his next one, right? Uh, you never know. You never know. I'll definitely, what you mean for sex or you mean for, oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have his willpower. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I'm a sucker. Oh, I'm a man. sucker. Yeah. You throw it at oh, me, well. it's hard for me to deny. I thought you were describing your, your sexual preferences when you said sucker, but never mind. Oh, no, definitely not. No. Listen, you got to be careful in Miami, man. Most of my clients are gay. They'll jump all over it once they hear this podcast. I love it, I love it man. Listen, oh, they love it. his feet. Oh, my God. Oh, nice, no, it's, nice. it's, we were talking about, we were talking about that to the, 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 our last podcast because, you know, I, it's a running joke like in my friend group that, you know, I train barefoot most of the time and all of these gay dudes will like slide into my DMs like, oh, I see you train barefoot. Like, how big are your feet? Like, do you, do you ever wear <laughs> shoes? Like, well, if you train barefoot, like your, your feet must get sore. Do you like foot, foot rubs? Like, if so, do you use lotion? I'm like, God damn it, guys. Like, enough. <laughs> I, I podcast barefoot. Hey, those are some nice looking feet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks, you wear, do you use lotion? We got to get, yeah. we gotta get to the sweat it out rub. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a. Uh... I think for all of your clients, let them know I'm a size nine. So no Whoa, right you about. guys heard it. All right. You better Nothing be careful. Right you're going to be getting a lot of shoes sent to you. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of shoes sent to you. The smallest foot of any of your we, friends. We better hope Bree's far. like, um, honey, why are all these guys um, <laughs> sending you sneakers? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Why well, do you I was on, trade with you now? Well, I was on this podcast. <laughs> oh, no, man. but it's, uh, no, it's, 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 it's awesome, man. Yeah. I, uh, this this got deep, man. I love this. Oh, this yeah, no, man. This was great. This is not the not the turn I expected, but I'm so glad that we went down this route, man. Dude, absolutely. Dude, CJ, we is... we've hit what uh, over an hour. Dude, we've hit over. We an have hour. already. We usually yeah. don't Flies. go over an hour. This was Flies. Awesome. Oh man, I'm sorry, guys. No, 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 no this is no, no, awesome. No. We oh, yeah. we love it. When Trust we me, we would have cut. go over an hour, then we're like, okay, we're 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 having a really good time. Yeah, if, oh, if nice, we weren't, nice, we would have yeah. cut it short a long time ago, man. Trust me on that. I mean, part two. If you guys want to come back and do oh, more of this, man. Absolutely. Guys, like, that's when you absolutely. come over here, Miami. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I can show you my bare feet in person. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And then I'm you can whisper in our ears at the Then club. you can meet all my yeah, clients yeah, yeah. and maybe get some foot rubs. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I just feel like we could talk about, gosh, there's so much. Yeah. Forever, man. Forever. Yeah. No. Brother, 
You're an amazing person. Yeah, man. You know, thank we, you so much. Thank you so much for coming on. How can people, how can people find you? You know, uh, how can they reach out? You know, you, uh, obviously you're very active in your, in your DMS and on social media. So please, yeah. you know, use this as an opportunity to, to uh, let everyone know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just at CJ Kogel, K O E G E L on Instagram that carries you across all my social platforms. Same thing. Um, yeah. Any questions, anything, please ask away. Like, yeah, I try to get to all my DMS when I can. Um, there's times in life where I'm like super DM friendly. And then times where I'm like, I'm stepping away from a week. You know, yeah. I just can't. Uh, can't well, now it. that you um, showed your feet, it's going to be very, Oh DM man. Friendly. Yeah. You're screwed now. Yeah. You're screwed now. Yeah. Just wait. <laughs> Um, but guys, yeah, this is incredible. I'm so proud of y'all for, for doing it. Yeah. Thank you so appreciate much. It. Yeah. Thank we you. appreciate having you on. And, um, I know I got it any way I can. Same I, here. Same here with gotta, you. Uh, yeah. Anytime, thank man. You. Any, anytime, especially when you got some of these, uh, when you got your new show, well, the new show you're going to come out on, you got to definitely Hopefully. let us know. We'll yeah. support you all the way. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, if there's any definitely. voting, we'll vote for you a hundred times. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get the Miami masses. Voting. Woo! Yeah, we'll dude, get, that's we'll awesome. Get, we'll get toes touching the screen. We'll get those. Feet yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Vote with your toe. Right. Totally. Um, uh... Uh, but uh, yeah, when when I get my first round of autos into us. Yeah, that'd be great, that. man. Yeah, let us know. Even, yes. you know, we'll promote it on, on our social channels. We'll 100. promote it on the podcast. That's everything. Man. Yeah, well, thank yeah, you man. so you much. Too. Yeah, this love is. Uh, this love is important, man. I think people I think this is good for people to understand that these kind of conversations should be normal yeah you know, we oh, yeah. should be able to open up like this and just talk and not not be a, afraid of of uh being transparent i think one of my biggest freedoms in life was when i i came to grips that there's nothing that i'm afraid to talk about yeah and that freed me from having to worry about anybody coming out with some random information about me or me not being able to talk about something because this person can hold this over my head like mm -hmm. yeah and it's like so. you said man to your clients have fun we're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Thing. So true. Yo, brother, I want to ask right, you, I always, I always take, uh, I always take my guests through a little quick burner question round. Okay. Yep, quick yep, answers. Yep. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> number one, um, yes. just because I know we were talking about, you know, the things like if situation, like if your wife was feeling a certain way, like you would stop doing that completely and so on and so forth. I want to take it to the other side. When, when is it that you would know or when is it not okay when your significant other is wanting you to stop something that is super important to you because it's an individual goal of yours and the reason they want you to stop is because it's stemming out of an insecurity on their end. When do you know how to not stop that goal of yours and when do you know when, okay, I need to pay attention to this. See, maybe I need to maneuver or, I, or you know what? They need to work on themselves and I have to bring that realization to them and, and understand that what I'm trying to do is very important for me. How do you have that? Yeah. I mean, that, that goes back to like, I think at this point we're so deep in the relationship where if that really is the case and I really genuinely feel like this is so important to me and I feel like you're holding me back because of insecurities on your end, I just approach it straight on. Like, this is how I feel. This is where I feel it's coming from. If it's not that, um, then we still need to talk about why this is so important to me. Uh, and if it is that, like how, what can I do on my end to help her not be so uh, self-conscious or whatever it is inside of that decision? Um, knowing that at the end of the day, that you're going to have things in your marriage where these are things you want to do so bad, like, but it's just not fruitful for the marriage. So like, that's what it's about, right? It's about, okay, I can let this go. Now, again, like, if it's this genuine love that you both have for each other, like she's going to see this and make this like way have, like she's going to make it where she prioritizes what makes me happy too. Right. So you shouldn't be in a relationship where you have to just give up everything. You know, the, the other side should be able to say, Oh, I know that how important this is for you. Like it's like school for Brie. Brie turned professional as a dancer when she was 18, moved to New York city, danced on Broadway, traveled all over the world, had this amazing career at the cost of not going to school. Fast forward, 33 year old Brie, I have this new love for learning. Now she's going to school, she's getting her degree at Harvard. She just took her LSATs. Congrats. And Oof. she is on fire, but the commitment is- Prom man, I bet, huh? Oh, if she goes here, the commitment is, I have to uplift a lot of the things here. Um, 
And so is that at an expense of some of the things that I want to do? Absolutely. Right. Like, and so you just got to hit that stuff head on, man. No, no bouncing around it. Just go right after the conversation. Hundred percent. That's how I would handle it. Really yeah. appreciate that answer. Um, yeah, number two, um, I've been asking this one for um, pretty often. What's the number one fitness tool that you would take with you if you can only choose one and you can't have all the other ones? Auto. Oh. <laughs> oh. Woo! Let's go. Man, no one gave you that one. <laughs> Ultimate plug. Ultimate. Yeah. So saying, Ultimate. So you're saying one product CJ has has stability training, resistance training, and strength training all in oh, one. Oh damn. Week. Your bed? No way. Ooh. Can't wait for that no. to come out, man. <laughs> excited. Yeah, really excited no, to see it that. Really is, uh, on that. It's funky. It is funky, man. I mean, it, it. It, it's as easy to think of if the Bosu ball had a baby with the perfect push up. Oh, you know, amazing. You see how I set yeah. you up there for the perfect, yeah. <laughs> her most perfect marketing strategy right there? Boom. No, but uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, you know. I, I honestly, if, if, if I didn't invent a product, I would say my body. Yeah. Really, dude. That's same, same, here. same here. That's all I need. I can don't, grab a tree and do pull ups. Mine. You know, I can you grab know a I squat. Yeah. 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 I know you <laughs> love your body. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like your body too. Woo! Uh, <laughs> don't be asking him Especially for feet. feet. We, yeah. we, we, know, yeah. we know everybody loves Josh's feet. Yeah. That's okay. Um, <laughs> question number three What's the wildest and craziest experience you've ever had as a fitness coach? Oh, as a fitness coach, shoot, I was going to, I thought you were going to say any, any time I was going to take you on. All right, then give me the any time. We'd rather hear that. Great white, great white shark. I was in Costa Rica. I mean, sorry, I was in Cape Town, South Africa. Oh, shoot. This whole like three day span was going to Kruger National Park, seeing like safari and lions and all that stuff. And then hopping on a plane, going to Cape Town and just going on this boat to see great white sharks and like just whales and you get up and it's it's dark out and there's a luminescent like algae that kicks off of the boat so the boat looks like the lights are underneath the boat but it's really just algae oh, that's kicking up from the engine and then you see dolphins in the distance jumping and then all of a sudden as you get closer to them they like shoot in and it looks like lightning bolts because they're so fast that they, they kick up the algae and then they like shoot out Damn. that's wild just, like, did you get video of that yeah oh, i have video oh we it. gotta see that oh, for sure I'm like a freaking nerd, dude. I, yeah. All the tours, I'm like, tell me more. Um, <laughs> but, you know, like those kind of things I, I hold on to because I'm an experiential type of person. Like, I will spend my money on experiences all the time over other stuff. Um, and I got to do that with Brie, and that was, that was a blast. Um, so, yeah, like that kind of stuff is is nuts. I, I just, it it's so out of your comfort zone. And, like, the fact that there's great white, white sharks in the water and, I like to surf. So what was the thing that made me scared? Uh, the scaredest of surfing was sharks. And so how can I learn more about sharks to feel more comfortable in the water with them? So like, that's kind of my vibe is like, instead of just being scared of them all the time, like, let me learn about this, let me respect them. And then you give off this different kind of vibe in the water of like, I respect you. I'm yep. here to have fun. They, you know, and they, and they say naturally like sharks can tell an energy source inside of the water. And then use like, the auto sphere to get strong as shit. You know, you so know, you can battle punch a shark in the face, punch a shark yeah. in the, right in the nose. <laughs> Dude, I'm the, here, not, to, not to hold you guys on longer, but whenever I hear those stories of people like, yeah, I punched a shark in the water. I'm like, have you ever tried to punch your friend? <laughs> <laughs> You're only going nowhere fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is funny. What, Kind of, what kind of wimp great white shark was that right uh, you know like but if it was oh, me shit. and i got in a, a shark attack and no one was there, i, I tell my punch yeah oh, we know you would just yeah i opened up his mouth jaws no. yeah oh, pulled my oh, arm I grabbed out that, i grabbed that fish he, he had before and i ate it and sushi yeah. <laughs> had nothing on me nothing on me but oh, man. yeah man. last question for you brother What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners today in one sentence? You know, I, I'm a big believer in, you know, the life that we live now will, it carries over into eternity for me. You know, I'm a faith-based guy. So, you know, my, my biggest advice to people is, is to, to live that way. You know, my favorite my favorite verse is, is Matthew 5, 16. It just basically talks about um, just be the light in the darkness, right? Let, let people see your light 
and know there's something different about you. And then because of that difference, they want to acquire what it is about you that's different. Um, so I don't necessarily think, you know, I'm the person who posts all this stuff about faith, faith, faith all the time, but I hope that people are able to see my life and say, oh, there's something about him that that's different. So um, yeah, man, stick up for what's right, you know, be a light in this world, you know, and don't, don't, don't be afraid of the consequences of what you're doing if it's right, you know? Yeah. And I've learned a lot from that recently, especially in terms of, of sticking in, in the, the climate we're in, you know, in the world and especially with social justice and, and sticking up for, you know, the equality and, 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 you know, the black community and things of that nature. It's just, I'm so diehard now of like everything I have is going to, to be poured into this because I know it's right. You know? Yeah. So it's a do the value, right things, y'all. <laughs> yeah, value based way of living, man. You know, it's so important. Yeah. You know, absolutely. All day, man. All right. One last time. Thank you, CJ. We appreciate you. You know, anything we can do to help you, appreciate you uh appreciate for coming on here, you. sharing your story, enlightening everyone. Hopefully, you know, you guys will all take this in. You guys that are listening will take this in, let it resonate because you know, I definitely learned a lot from it. Thank you, man. Appreciate Much you. Much love, brother. Yeah, Till next guys, time. Man.